Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the WordPress community and podcast connecting people with the products, lessons, and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me today and always and forever is my good buddy and co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? It's going pretty well. I'm, uh, you're going to make me blush, man. That that, <laughs> that that particular intro is a little bit more romantic than it usually is. It was I like a little it. romantic. I, uh, <laughs> I woke up feeling a little silly today and I fired off a silly email to our email list uh which i was a bit nervous about but the unsubscribes have been fairly low so i think it's played well uh but yeah i'm in a goofy mood today it's friday heck yeah it's friday so that's all good so uh to continue on our theme here we we've switched things up a little bit uh there's not going to be a guest with us today but matt and i have both brought something to the table that we'd like to discuss i'm super excited about mine i've been trying to get matt on a zoom call for like three days now so i could discuss this with him um and we decided it'd be better to just record our discussion so we'll see how that goes matt has a subject i have no idea what he is going to be talking about today and we also wanted to bring up uh, a post from the group we found interesting that we kind of wanted to further the dialogue on. So last week, I think uh, I made you go first. So I guess it's only fair that I go first today. Plus, I'm super excited. So I'm going first. Fair is fair. Okay. So you have heard me go on and on about this little book called They Ask, You Answer. Uh, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been on this reading binge all year. I'm up to uh, almost finishing my 12th book for the year, and we're only into June, so that's pretty awesome. Heck yeah. Uh, This is the book for me that's stood out the most. It's resonated with me the most. Uh, I've gone back and reread so many parts of it two and three times. I've probably read the whole book through a couple times in the last couple months. Uh, But specifically what I wanted to talk about today was in here if you're following along in your bible at home it's page 187 uh chapter 40 it's uh the selling seven video one uh it's called the 80 percent video and so i won't uh read all of this through here but the gist of it is this and and obviously this book is written not for web developers specifically but just for people in sales in marketing so the gist is if you go out to sales appointments about 80% of the questions you get from customers are the same no matter who you go out to. So you have to spend all that time over and over again Mm -hmm. explaining these same things. Um, And you're doing it over and over and over each time, wasting time. And then you got about 20% of their questions that are unique to their specific thing. And that's really what you need to dig into. So what he recommends in this book is creating the 80% video. And basically what you do is you make a list of all the questions you get all the time. You'll notice in in the group this week, I posted a post asking people what questions they get. It was a little bit of research so I could make sure my list was on point. Uh, Thank you guys for that. Um, And then you narrow it down. He recommends about seven. He's found seven works nicely. The seven questions you get most often. And then you basically answer those questions as truthfully, transparently, honestly, and succinctly as possible. So we get to some questions that are hard. There's a lot of cool FAQs in this book. Um, Questions like price, which are hard. You can't just say a website's $5 or uh, $5,000 or $50,000, but you can answer that question honestly and transparently and the best you can. You can say, well, it depends. There's a lot of factors that go into it. These are the things that make them more expensive. These are the things that make them uh, less expensive. This is how you go about getting a quote. And that's an honest and open answer um, that not everybody does, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. People just say, you know, uh, get a quote from me and you'll find out. So the idea here is you create these seven videos answering these questions. Um, And then all of your prospects that come in can view this video. You can use it in your marketing and stuff. Uh, But Earlier in the book, he talks about assignment selling, and that's where I think this is really interesting. So basically, this is how I'm going to be applying this to my business. I've outlined the seven questions I'm going to uh, answer. I'm going to record videos on all of them. I'm actually going to link them to blog posts where I explain more in depth because I don't want the video to be forever long. Um, And I'm going to use this in, in what he talks about as assignment selling. So let's say somebody comes to me, shoots me an email out of the blue, gets referred to me calls me out of the blue, whatever. Uh, and we're going to set up, they, they do their project inquiry form and we're going to set up a discovery meeting, right? Mm -hmm. So when I set up the discovery meeting, I'm going to tell them, Hey, there's a bunch of questions that almost every one of my customers ask. I've 
uh, filled up a video to answer all these questions for you. Uh, if you watch this before we meet, then we'll, our meeting is going to be more productive. You're going to be less likely to make mistakes in the buying process. Helps both of you get on the same page about things like terminology yes. and, and stuff like that too, I'm sure. Right. And the idea here is you tell them, you ask them, can you commit to watching this before our meeting? So you're giving them an assignment before. And then what he actually does is call the people the day before the, the morning of that meeting and says, Hey, have you had a chance to watch the video? If they haven't, he reschedules the meeting. So this basically starts all those meetings off by answering these really important questions. And really all these questions do is really build up trust with you. You know, if you're answering the question, you know, some of the ones I have are how much do projects cost? What happens if I don't like what you make? which I think is a question nobody has ever asked me, but every client thinks like, right. I'm like, what am I going to get? Like, I... I'm, I'm, I'm handing over a large amount of money. Like, is it going to be worth it? Am I going to like, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. So my thought is I'm going to answer all these questions up front. They're going to have already spent probably 10 to 15 minutes, uh, watching me in video form, kind of getting to know me, getting used to my personality and, and how I answer things. And if they like the answers I have or not. So before I ever have that meeting, uh, they're going to have a lot more trust built up with me before we ever get there. So that's like my number one mission with my agency right now is, uh, is working on these. I posted this morning, a, a blog post. that's going to be one of these about email because I've had so many problems with customers not knowing how to handle email stuff. But so, yeah, I'm super excited. If you, if you don't have, they ask you answer, uh, I would recommend picking it up. Uh, if you have it, I would recommend flipping to page 187 and rereading this little chapter. It's about three pages long. It's not bad, but uh, I think this is going to be an awesome thing for my agency. Very cool. Yeah, I can uh, I can definitely see that. I mean, I use um, like my onboarding questionnaire sort of in a in a similar way. I can for, sort of, um, but it's basically like a, a way to uh, to kind of check to see if the clients invested enough to move forward. So similarly, if they don't watch the videos or if they don't have time or they feel like it's a waste of time, then it's probably not going to be a client that you're going to have a, a super good time working with. Right. And, and he talks about that in here, like the objections of people saying, uh, if, if they don't watch the video, do you really not meet with them? And he's like, yeah, because if they, if they can't sit down and watch this video, they're not far enough along in the process that they're going to make a decision anyways. So me going out and having that meeting with them is going to end up being a giant waste of time you know and right. he tracks everything he's real big into uh, hubspot and analytics on all this stuff so he's tracked a bunch of these calls and how they worked you know if the people did or didn't watch the video and those things uh, so it's pretty interesting so i don't know i'm super excited about this i have to uh to figure out how i'm going to record all these videos i'm just going to do them talking head style uh, i'll probably put in some b-roll of projects I've done when I'm talking about, you know, uh, what if you don't like what I've designed, you know, maybe I'll show some portfolio stuff, uh, pricing, I've put together a pricing guide. So maybe I can show some excerpts from that. So I'll try to do a little production value in the videos, but I don't want to spend a lot of time editing and shit like that because I hate editing video. Yeah. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. At least for the, uh, the admin bar. I'm not going to edit. Can yours. I send you my Ogle videos too? No, no. And actually it's funny. Uh, when you first started talking about this, I was like, well, okay, you sit down in the meeting and somebody's going to ask Kyle a question and then Kyle's just going to not say anything, hold up his phone and just say, just, <laughs> just hold it in front of him while it's, it's playing. <laughs> that would be awesome. I would be, I would be some kind of special if I did that. <laughs> Yeah, All right. That's so that's sure. what I got today. That's what I'm pumped about. Uh, Y'all keep me honest on this. Uh, ask me if this is done in about a week or so, because I usually get things done that quickly. So uh, stay on me. What you got today? Well, um, I've got something uh, kind of similar um, in that I'm going to need some accountability buddies. Kyle, you're always mine. So you're also the person that uh, I think is best suited to uh, to ask this question or at least bring up this topic to and that is content generation. I need to get much, 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 much better about that. I don't write very much. I don't do any uh, like content uh, marketing. Most of my business comes in through referrals, but with what uh, you know, things are changing uh, in the world right now, I'm not doing terribly, uh, but at the same time, I do think that now is, is the time to start focusing on, on getting stuff out there, starting to write blogs, starting to to just write content, which 
I think my uh, my excuse is usually, oh, I don't have time, but that's a lie. Um, I think it's to do VR and watch movies and play video games. You got all kinds of time. Right. Exactly. No, I definitely have the time. I think that it's a uh, it's a confidence thing. Um, I I never really like what I write. Like it's good enough, but I'm uh, I'm a perfectionist. I always have been. I judge myself incredibly hard. I love other people's writing, um, and I just I don't see that in mine. Granted, I think that it's probably something that comes with time and practice. So I just need to bite the bullet and start generating this stuff. Well, it's funny we came on this same kind of uh, content topic because <laughs> this is literally the answer to your entire question. Uh, this will do everything. If you need a content market, this is pretty much the only thing you need right here. Um, as far as the perfectionist stuff and the time and things like that, I'm not, I'm not bothered obviously by things not being perfect. I kind of like things raw and not perfect. It's more of my personality than anything. I'm totally fine with something being done rather than being perfect. So I really don't have that pressure on myself. Um, but I think really what, think about what you're looking for when you go uh, searching for something, especially a service. Like if you're trying to build that trust and find the right person to partner with, you're more looking to connect with those people than you are looking for polish. You know, you'd rather have authenticity than polish. You know what I mean? So I think you just answering it in the way Matt would answer the question is the best way possible. And, you know, I've, I've had the problem with people uh, stealing content from my website. Uh, mm -hmm. The more I've just spoke as Kyle, um, one, I think less people will do it because it it's going to be weird. It's going to be really weird if my voice is on their website because right. I'm just starting to relax. I wouldn't want to say like I'm finding my voice or it's not something fancy like that. Like I'm just trying to only be me and nothing else and nothing fancy and rough around the edges and I'm going to misspell things and I'm going to make a subject line to an email you're invited with the word spelled <laughs> you're in because that's just what I do. Right. Um, yeah. And I think that definitely works. I do think that, um, you know, one of the one of the things that that I struggle with is that like if I sit down in a meeting and I'm face to face with somebody and they've got questions, I'm able to articulate what I have in my head very very well. Um, but when it comes to taking the stuff that's in my head and putting it down on paper or typing it out, that's the uh, the hurdle that I need to get over. And that's been something since like literally fifth grade, I believe. Like. Before fifth grade, I couldn't put anything in my head down on paper. It was impossible. My fifth grade teacher, Mr. Trottier, the dude was awesome. Like, actually shout caught out. me back up to where I was supposed to be. Uh, so shout out to Mr. Trottier. Um, yeah, like, before then, it was really difficult. Um, and I still struggle with that a bit. So I think that it will come in practice. But just doing it is something that I need to do. Yeah, maybe you start, here, here's a couple thoughts. One, it doesn't have to be written blogs. Like there's a million ways to produce content. Look at you right now, you're making video content. You could literally do the same exact thing you're doing right now, except instead of the audience being the admin bar, the audience is your agency's customers. Turn on the video, explain something. I and didn't. if you feel comfortable explaining things to people in person, just pretend the camera's person, done. You know what I mean? You could have those transcribed and then do a little bit of editing and you have a blog post, you know? So it doesn't have to be a bunch of written content. Actually, yeah, I'd have a blog post and a video post. And a video. That's not a bad idea. So there, so there you go. And I mean, sometimes it can feel odd. I know when I've made videos for, for my agency, it can feel odd to just be talking to the camera in a room by yourself. I mean, get your roommate or somebody stand on the other side and ask you the question. I mean, I'm sure somebody would do that for you. You answer the question for two or three minutes and done. I mean, you can edit video, you can publish video, you can send it off to Rev. Uh, they'll do like the the people made uh, transcriptions for like $1.25 a minute, or you can do the auto generated ones for like 25 cents a minute. I use the audio generated ones and then just quickly go through and edit. It's good enough for me. Right. Uh, the, the, the people one they do are like perfect, but um 
you know, it wouldn't cost you much of an investment at all. And then you have all the content you need, start putting it on YouTube, put it on your website. I've put, I've started putting a bunch of videos on my website that are just me talking like this. That's a really good idea. Yeah. I mean, I definitely feel, especially after, you know, doing the admin bar for so long that, uh, I'm, I'm way more comfortable in front of a camera. So yeah, I'm going to give that a shot. it, it takes a whole lot less time to record a video than it does to write a blog post. Yeah. And more personality comes out, which I think like, you know, you sell yourself before your business. So yeah. Yeah. And the more it's coming from you, the better off you'll be, especially, I mean, I think about people like YouTubers that I watch, uh, I'll kind of go through, I'll find some new YouTuber, you know, and I'll watch like binge watch all his videos right now. It's Peter McKinnon, all mm-hmm. his photography stuff. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, so I like binge. I feel like I know this dude. Like if he right. walked in my office right now, I know so much about him. I would be completely comfortable with this guy right now. He has no idea who I am. He has 3.5 million subscribers. You know what I mean? I like, want to reiterate that we didn't know each other's <laughs> topics today, yeah, but yeah. man, like we're, we're talking about kind of doing the same thing now. Very it'll, cool. make, it'll make uh, titling this episode easier. That's for sure. <laughs> but but when you develop that relationship with people, you don't even have to know what's going on, you know? And it's the same thing with like uh, funnel packs, right? So mm-hmm. people are signing up for my funnels and I'm emailing them all the time, nurturing them with all kinds of awesome emails that shh, Matt Davies wrote for me. Um, but I'm sending all these things. By the time they're done with that funnel, they know a lot about me and I didn't have to do that one-on-one interaction. So if you have a lot of those videos, people are going to know you right away and you know one of my biggest criterias lately uh with taking on customers has been like how well do i get along with you like when we Mm -hmm. jump on a call does it feel comfortable or does it feel awkward um and you'll weed out a lot of the people that would be awkward because you'll just repel people that don't like you and you'll attract people that do like you and you don't want every customer you want the right customers yeah for sure i mean if if you if anybody looks at the uh the their client list like your best clients or at least the ones where you know you're not frustrated working with or like whatever it it, typically or at least it is for me they're people that i'm like you know what i i could go to a a cookout with these guys and have a, a a good time like that's the that's the kind of client that i want yep and i've been trying to like uh, figure out what the like common things are, but I think it's a lot of, it's just personality. Right. Does me and this person I work with get along well, which is interesting. There's my niche people that can stand Kyle and me (laughs) saying y'all and me saying, sending emails with urine in the subject line. Like if you can handle that, we're probably a good fit. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. So bringing us into land here, we have a, uh, uh, post in the group. It actually just happened, uh, this morning, uh, Malachi had posted about client gifts. So, uh, gift, not gifts, not like animated pictures, uh, presents. Um, so he put in here, uh, not sure if it's appropriate, but was wondering if you wondering what ideas you guys have for gifts to clients upon project completion. Uh, this isn't every, this isn't an every client sort of thing. We wrapped up a large Mm -hmm. project. I would, I feel like I should give them a gift. Typically I don't go, typically I do go for a nice champagne, but this seems a little bleh. Plus they do not drink alcohol. Would love to know your thoughts, please. Now the first response and why this like really caught my eye is Karen had mentioned like, be really careful doing this. There's a lot of ways you can upset customers or come off wrong when you do uh, gifts. And I think she made some really good points in here. I definitely wouldn't have thought of all these things. So we'll make sure to link this post so you guys can go check all that out. But client gifts, um, where do you sit on this? Well, I would definitely steer clear of uh, like any, I, I would I would probably steer clear of alcohol just because you don't know somebody's history or the family history or anything like that. I would steer Absolutely. clear of like, you know, cigars or something like that. Like, unless you know for a, a solidified fact that this is something that they would appreciate, like it's it's a hard hard one to, to go for. Um, I've, I've definitely purchased gifts for some of my, my favorite clients in the past. Um, and the ones that go over the best, I feel, um, I'll head over to Printful or some on-demand printing. And uh, like last winter, um, ramping up to uh, to the Christmas season, I bought some of my favorite uh, clients a really nice hoodie with their logo on it um, and delivered those to them. And man, they loved it. One of my uh, my clients, he's uh, he's currently selling 
a massive amount, like just this very large, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, condo, like a condominium complex. And I, I got that, that logo printed on a really nice hoodie in the same brand blue that, uh, that his logo like goes well with and gave it to him. And, uh, yeah, he wears it to almost, or not now because it's summer, but he was wearing it, uh, to like almost every, uh, meeting with a, a potential buyer and like getting compliments on it. And like, it's, it's one of his favorite pieces of clothing now. So I think going out and getting something that's personalized to them is, uh, is a good, good starting point. I agree. I will say I, I, I called out there when you said their logo, not yeah. your own logo. Like I did have a client here recently ask if they could get some ogle hats. So I made them some ogle hats and sent them to them, but that's just cause they asked. Uh, right. Yeah. You don't want to come off them. like you're marketing to them. Right. Yeah. Right. So you make it in their logo. It doesn't have to say your name on it. Uh, I've used this example 500 times, James Rose. I was on his podcast and he sent me these two awesome wooden coasters with Ogle web design on them. Uh, my daughter's tore up this one, so it has no more pads on it, but, um, yeah. So these don't say James Rose or content snare or uh, agency highway podcast, nothing. Like, but you're always going to remember Ogle. who gave it to you. Always, every right. time I've took pictures of these, I've shared these. Every time this subject comes up, I share this story. I tag uh, James in it. I don't know what these cost, James. I imagine they're not super expensive, um, but he he did ship them from Australia because I remember the packaging being very expensive, just mm -hmm. the shipping. Uh, but th with the amount of times I've mentioned this, he's gotten tons of publicity out of it. I don't know what the exact ROI is, but I bet he feels good about when he sent these out. Right? right. So I think it's important you make it useful to your customers. The other thing I've done recently, and this isn't like we finished a project. So you get a gift. It's just been more spur of the moment type things. Um, because I've been reading so much, I've sent several clients books that I've enjoyed. So, uh, one of my clients, I sent them, uh, they ask you answer, uh, I have another client that I sent this I'm knock stuff off. I sent this book to a uh, one page marketing plan by Alan Dibb. Um, I might actually be getting a bulk order of this book and sending this to clients when they sign on a project, like before we do it. Uh, what's neat about this one is this basically gives them all the ideas of how you can uh, digitally market your business. So basically it just amps up all the things I can sell to them. So it's a nice little education piece, but um, you know, sending a book or sending something, you know, that you think is useful to them personally, I think is uh, pretty nice too. Didn't you uh, at one point um, donate uh, like planting trees or something in the, in a client's behalf? Yeah. So through the Arbor Day Foundation, uh, when I launch a client's website, uh, you can go to arborday.org um, and you can basically you get a greeting card. It costs like six bucks or whatever, uh, but you get the greeting card. They uh, plant a tree somewhere. So, uh, but you can customize the greeting card and put like images or whatever you want inside of it. So I basically say, you know, um, congratulations on the launch of your new website to offset some of the carbon footprint that we've created, putting you online. I've donated a tree uh, in, in your name and sent that to them. Um, I think it's neat because, I mean, I think being green is good and mm -hmm. all that. Uh, my clientele that I've done it for so far, I don't think it's struck a chord with them, but uh, I, I'm sure they weren't mad about it. You know, Right, like how dare you idea. plant a tree? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I think it's a, I think it's a cool idea and we get to plant a tree somewhere. So that's fun to me and it's unique. You know, that's not, you know, getting, getting a bottle of champagne is something they might expect or, you know, a, a sleeve of golf balls or something, you know, but that's something that you probably won't have many other companies doing for you. Oh man, a, a sleeve of uh, golf balls with uh, the client's logo on them would be pretty cool. There you go. It can be done. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you can put, you can put a logo on so many different items nowadays, Anything. like for, for little cost, um, that like, yeah, after working with, with somebody for however long it takes, you know, that project to, uh, to go over, you usually have a pretty good idea of like who they are, what their personalities or hobbies are. So I'm, I'm willing to bet that you could probably find something that you could customize that they would use on a daily basis or at least very much appreciate. Right. I agree. So get to know your customers. Heck yeah. Send them something thoughtful. 
All right. That's all I got. I'm done. Same. I'm out of here. I've used all my energy now. Yeah. Now, now you're going to go take a nap. <laughs> yeah. No, now I got a bunch of uh, videos to make. So yeah, you we'll do. see. I got to get dolled up first, though. I don't think this attire is appropriate for uh, me. Kyle, you're pretty enough as you are. I know. Right. This works for the admin bar. I'd like to be a little bit more presentable in my agency. <laughs> All right. Did I leave anything out you wanted to make sure we got to? No, no. I think that, uh, I mean, with what with this new conversational style, I think it's it's pretty easy just to, to end a, a, a video whenever. But uh, I will say that uh, with everything that's going on right now, just everybody be good to each other. Absolutely. We can do better for sure. Heck yeah. All right, guys. Well, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to like and subscribe to our channel, share our content and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time and it greatly helps support the show. We will catch you all inside the group. Bye-bye.